let's talk about fast faceting in the domain of search engines refers to providing some context within the context of some search results what are the buckets that we want labeled so in effect these are grouping aggregations um, that you that you may already be familiar with from mongodb uh, in general so uh, but this is uh, actually a little bit even more powerful than than that in that um, we can achieve this faceting or grouping within the context of full text search results so um, uh, within the set of a very sophisticated query we can understand and 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 return back the count or the cardinality of various subsets of our information so let me just draw this up a little bit here so uh, let's say we've got a universe of movies right here these are all of our um, movies that we've got in our collection and uh, we have uh, you know we have all of the movies that are uh, Keanu Reeves movies and then uh, within that we have uh, movies that are drama and then we have movies that are action and in fact uh, action and drama uh, will intersect uh, each other so let's go ahead and and, and draw it as such here so uh, we've got this set of drama here and we've got this set of action movies here right so we can find uh, with uh, our search operators we can hone in and say we want all movies that uh, Keanu starred in that are action movies so we can get this set here or we can say drama movies or we can say drama and action movies and hone in on the set here that Keanu movies that are both drama and action movies right so um, this is uh, the interesting thing about uh, our findability right but what we want to be able to do is say um, of all the movies that Keanu was in how many are there that are drama movies so we want this count of them right we can use search and we can find all of these uh, straightforwardly but we actually want the counts of each of these buckets as well as we're navigating our site and you can think of this as, uh, say, an e-commerce site where you're navigating the categories of your products and allowing users to find electronics uh, that are audio, for example, and so on. So let's take a look at facets in action. On the movies data, we have a couple of fields that are worthy of uh, faceting that make interesting facets. So let's take a look at our configuration for the movies collection. In this collection, we have a couple of fields. We have year and we have genre. Uh, both of those uh, make for interesting facets and it requires a little bit of configuration in the uh, index configuration here and will impact having to re-index your collection if you add it later. Uh, for the genres field, we add um, a type here for string facet. We keep our string here so that we can search by uh, genre and do so in a, a, a fuzzy manner, however our default uh, analyzer is defined. So in this case, it's a standard analyzer. So case won't matter, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and on the year field, we have uh, defined um, faceting here for uh, for numeric so we define a number facet now I also have the type number on the year that allows us to do exact or range uh, searching on the year so uh, for particular uses of a field you may need to configure a field in more than one way now you also see in my configuration that I've got a uh, type string facet here this is uh, a, a semi-humorous effect from um, what you get when uh, data can be any type. 
So in our movies collection in the sample data, they're actually, uh, because the year field uh, through kind of the pure document model uh, could be a string or a year or uh, any other type of uh, BSON supported type. So in our movies data, there's actually, as I was looking at the data and counting the facets, the, the number facet was giving me less uh, total movies than there were movies in the, in the entire collection. So I turned on string faceting and sure enough, there's a handful of movies that have a uh, errant uh, special character that turns it into a string. So it's really a four digit year with some weird special character on there. So there are some strings. So that's actually an interesting thing that uh, you can experience either purposefully or um, inadvertently where if you're changing types of information, um, it's going to leave that information out of uh, various indexing uh, that is geared towards a certain type that that field is not in this particular document. So keep that in mind. Okay, so while we've got this in action, we've got, again, we've got the genre and the number, uh, the year field uh, set up for faceting. Now we are going to go over to our little demo application here, and we're going to facet movies by decade and movies by genre. So what you'll see here is not necessarily a pretty uh, graph here, but out of the 27 movies that Keanu uh, was in, um, here is the year distribution. So he started appearing in movies in the 1980s and then more movies in the 1990s and has tapered off um, in later years. And our data set kind of ends at 2015, actually. Um, and here's the uh, distribution of the movies that Keanu uh, starred in by genre. So he uh, appeared in more drama movies than any other type. And there actually are a, a few fantasy movies and adventure movies that he's starred in as well. Okay, so faceting through Compass. Let's take a look at uh, the aggregation pipeline, the dollar search aggregation pipeline here stage uh, within Compass. Uh, if we take a look at the documentation, again, we'll link to that down below, the facet operator, and then you provide which facets that you uh, want from there. And we talked about the, we're doing the year facet, and we're going to bucket that by the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, and get counts back for each one of those decade buckets. And now, if there's any that uh, any of the movies that have a, a year that is not in these bucket ranges, then there will be a facet called other and a count provided just for a catch-all other bucket. And we also facet by uh, the genres field here. So drama, action, adventure, and so on. Um, so that's the request to get facets. There's no other search operator applied in here. And if there is a, a search operator applied, uh, the facet counts will be provided, returned back within that subset of documents that match that search operator. In this case, no search operator was provided. And that is the, uh, a special case that matches all the documents in the collection. So we're effectively faceting across all of the documents um, in the collection and getting counts across our entire universe of movies. And uh, the interesting thing or the tricky thing about facets, and we'll talk about the details of this in uh, the advanced section episode, uh, but facets and search results are two different kinds of sets of information. And generally speaking, aggregation pipeline returns back documents. And so the dollar search operator by default returns documents. And that's what it does here. Um, but facets are metadata about the search results. And there's other pieces of metadata that the dollar search stage can also return back um, and that we'll touch on in other episodes. But in this case, facets are uh, another set of information. And so uh, there's some trickery that we apply. We'll go into details in this in the advanced section where we get our search results back as documents. As you can see here, I'm navigating the document space here. 
and uh, and getting those back and then in another section of the result is I get back a meta section that returns back <coughs> the facets here so we get back our year buckets here for say the 1920s and how many is in the 1920s and that is the data that we used to present uh, this particular visualization right here where we use that count just to draw a bar um, in proportion to the the count across the total number of results 27 in this case so this is a proportion out of 27.